Howdy folks, Sapper here, aka Sean, and I am bringing you Next War India Pakistan Unification. So, Unification is a scenario. We are now getting into game turn one. I do apologize for the previous video. There was a good stretch where there was no audio. It's because my microphone. Uh, was slightly unplugged from the uh, camera. The camera has its own internal microphone, but because, and I'm using a, an external mic, you know, like a lapel mic or whatever, and uh, because it wasn't completely in, the lapel mic, because it wasn't completely pushed in, it wasn't working, and I guess the camera felt somewhat of a connection, so it didn't activate the camera's internal microphone. So unfortunately, you had no sound. So you can kind of just use your imagination on the last video and uh, pretend I'm saying something tactically brilliant or something like that. Um, you know, you guys take your pick. You know, maybe I was telling um, some kind of stupid dad joke. But anyway, so we are now into game turn one. Weather is gonna be sunny. Um, the initiative phase that goes automatically to the Republic of India on the first turn, they do get surprise benefits, which I believe is a column shift in their favor. Um, I did do random events. So random events is in, I don't remember which supplement, but random events is something that's, um, was introduced in one of the two supplements. So basically you roll a D100 for both sides and then you apply the results. Um, so India rolled, uh, let me look, let me, let me make sure I get exactly. So India rolled civil unrest, which is placed an interdiction strike marker in any hex. And Pakistan rolled sleeper cell, immediately conduct one SOF mission, no SOF. Marker needed so special operation forces, so you get to do a special forces mission. So the interdiction I placed over here, and can you see that? Nope, you can't see that. I need to move my camera just a little bit more. Placed over here in Kashmir. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it will affect it right now because you don't check supply. You don't do a first supply phase on game turn one. So I basically, basically this road has been taken out by airstrikes or whatever. And not necessarily the road taken out, but airstrikes are preventing the flow of supply basically. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the road has been destroyed. It's just they're making it impossible for supplies to get through. So, and in the mountains, it's particularly dangerous. Well, the, this wall, the white areas, that's impassable terrain unless there's a road there. So basically supply can't even get through there. If I was to do an interdiction on, um, let's see if I can see it. Say this road right here, then you have to use the underlying terrain, which is going to be, I think that's rough woodland. So you'll use the movement value for the rough woodland instead of the road. But this white is impassable. So that would basically knock these guys out of, completely out of supply. So I chose to put that there. The special forces mission. Where, where did I put that? I got it somewhere on this thing. That's what happens when you get too many. Uh, ah, there it is. So the special forces mission is going to happen right here. I'm going to try to, I think I, I need to try to, to detect that supply depot. So we want to try to, as the Pakistanis, we want to try and knock out the supplies in the Kashmir Valley to make it easier to uh, take control of this area. Because if these guys are out of supply, it's going to be a big disadvantage for them. So... Uh, what else did we do? We did the the detection phase. Each side gets three detection attempts. Um,
Yeah, the electronic detection, we'll go over here to the rules real quick. So right here we have electronic detection. Each side gets three attempts because nobody is intervening on their behalf. No Russia, China, or uh, America. You don't get anything additional. Uh, and you have the allied, non-allied side. I use non-allied for both sides because I can't imagine that the level of sophistication for either army is um, at the same level that the United States is at or a NATO country is at. So I use the non-allied for both. So basically you have to roll a, one, a zero, one, or a two. Um, yeah, there's no AWACS advantage, so... So that's just to detect headquarters. So I did, I attempted to detect that one, failed. Attempted to detect that one, failed. Uh, that one was detected, or that artillery unit. So you can do artillery units and headquarters. Successfully detected headquarters, not successful. And then there was one over in Kashmir that was, uh, uh, tried to detect the, cash, or the the Pakistan headquarters and that was unsuccessful. So it looks like I think we got two detection attempts. So what we need to do now is we are going to try to detect that supply depot. Let's find out. Special Forces CRT. We're going to do a recon. That is a supply depot in Flatwoods. So it looks like we need to roll a four or lower to detect it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's see here. Can we see that? We sure as heck can see that. Four or lower. Magic number not detected. So that Special Forces mission was not successful. We don't have to roll for survivability of that because that was a random event. So it doesn't, doesn't count against the actual special forces uh, marker allotment that each, each country has. So now we get to actually do, let me remove these detection, these plastic detection markers. Those are just kind of let me know that that was what was attempted. And then if they get detected, then I actually put the yellow, the yellow marker that you can see right there. All right, let me look here. All right, so the initiative player allocates and resolves special forces missions. Looks like India gets I think I need to get some uh, some Litco tokens made for these too. That might help out a little bit because, you know, I'm a big fan of the Litco stuff. So I get a lot of questions asked about it. Like, what are those plastic markers that you use? Like, you know, you'll see like there's an arrow, you know, these. I have a whole tray full of different shapes, different colors, all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm a really big fan of it. Yeah, it can get kind of expensive. Um, but if you just do it a little bit at a time, it's not so bad. But uh, I like to use those because they stand out a little bit more. Like these markers, they just get lost in all the other markers. Um, so that's what I really like about just using the other, the other tokens. Um, you know what? I probably could... Yeah, I don't really have anything... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't really have anything that that I kind of want to use. That I kind of want to use to represent that. Um, let me get some arrows out at least. And that'll help help a little bit. So I'll just use those to point at the actual marker. So let me think here, what do we want to do? We can do raids with the special forces. We can do 
detection sam or theater weapons tracks i don't know if i'm gonna do theater weapons but it might be good to try to reduce the uh detection or sam track we can do a recon and we can also do a targeting you can only do targeting on something that's been detected so for example this artillery unit has been detected so now i can slap a well now i can attempt to target it with the special forces which is probably what i'll do so we'll do this here and we'll do that so if we're successful it'll make it easier to do airstrikes on that artillery that artillery is that's flat ground so it's not really a good place to be flat ground when it comes to airstrikes is not a good place um, I might want to target some of these. Let me see. We got some, we got this installation. There's an air base underneath this right here with a strike one marker on it. So that would probably be a good candidate for a special forces targeting mission. I think I will do that to make it easier to do an airstrike on that. Basically, you can just imagine there's a bunch of special forces guys hiding up in the hills or in a building somewhere and they have a um, this big electronic device. It's probably, just imagine a pair of binoculars that has an infrared laser on it and they will shine that laser on the target. And when an aircraft flies over and they have precision guided munitions, they can follow that laser right into the target that's that's an oversimplification of it but that's pretty close to kind of what happens um uh, let me see we got two more now it doesn't mean we have to use them but i think let's try what is our chances we might try and do a raid on that helicopter let's see that is in that's flat. Mm, not a bad chance. Let's see if we can hit this helicopter. We need like a, a four to try and uh, reduce that chopper. Just take some assets out. Does. Yeah, that's two victory points for an attack helicopter eliminated, so that might not be a bad idea. And last but not least, let's, uh, is that an installation? Yeah, let's try to do that up there. Can you see that? Nope, it's too far north. Or not, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm thinking north is the, the top of the map is always north, but... So, right here, there was a strike one on that installation, so let's just try to... Let's see, is there any... Capture or destroy enemy controlled airfield or town. Oh, that's two victory points for capture or destruction of an enemy controlled installation. So if we can destroy that, that's two victory points. That'll be a good thing. Uh, at least as far as India goes. And also, if we can destroy that installation, that will pull some of the air units out of play, right? Because you got to think that those air, the, the uh, aircraft that were there, um, they have to rebase someplace. So it kind of pulls them out of the mix, at least for, for that turn. So let's look. Um, what do we need to roll? We need, that is flat, and that's an installation. Mountain, urban, any jungle, flat, installation. We need a two or lower. That is a three, and unfortunately it's not good enough. Surviving. Looks like we need to roll less than a seven. Okay, so that guy survived. 
So nothing happened there. All right, what do we got? We have, uh, we'll do this helicopter. That is also flat, flat, helo, need a four or lower. That is successful. So that is, where were we? Flat, helo, got a one, so that is a two. Let's see here. Results. Any one, two, or X result against a helo causes a step loss. So you don't get anything better for getting higher. And that helicopter is eliminated, so that's kind of cool. Um, there's not really an eliminated units box on here so I'll end up making one of those so that is plus two victory points for an eliminated helicopter so what we do is we'll put two VPs this turn on the uh, status display for India Let's see if these guys survive. That's a seven. They were destroyed, so they died in service of their country. Now, those guys might be able to come back in later turns for in reinforcements or whatever, but as it stands right now, those special forces are no longer available. But, hey, they did a thing. They, they did a thing, right? Um, we are going to, I thought I said I was going to try to target that guy. So targeting is a four or less. They did successfully target. Let's see if they survive. They rolled a zero, they do survive. So where is my targeting markers? So I'm trying to build a little tray. These are just, here's my targeting markers right here. Um, these are, these are generic counters that can be used with any game of Next War, with the exception of these right here. I probably need to move those into the Poland box. But all these other ones are used across the game. So I'm just trying to make one trade, or that way I can just pull it out and then use it for any game. Um, I did look and verify. I was wondering if the counter mix for clearing markers might have differed between game series, and they, they don't. They don't appear to, so... Um, so those will go in there as well. And there might be some other, some other odds and ends. All right. looks like a minus one to targeting. So we'll put that there. And I believe I rolled to zero for survival. So these guys make it, they make it home this time. They might not make it home next time. And then last but not least. What are we doing here? What did I say I was going to do? It's not a hell. Okay, yeah. So that's going to be a further raid against that installation. So that installation is flat. It looks like. Contains a city, so that's minus one, but it's also occupied by at least one brigade, so that's plus two. So we get a plus one to the die roll. Normally we need, we're successful on a three, so we need to roll a two or lower. Can't see that. Can you see that over there? There we go. Two or lower. Man, India has been on it this time. Those are... Those are good rolls to start with. That was a two. So that is just a strike one. Um, actually, I need to. That's going to be a strike two that that will turn into. I don't remember. I don't think you roll for... 
I'll probably need to look because it will be there's possible collateral damage there. I don't remember. I think collateral damage does take place after special forces, but during the strike phase, you have to wait. So hold on a second. All right, so I had to look it up really quick. We do roll for collateral damage with the special forces. I think when you do an airstrike, then you you wait. Yeah, you the rolling for collateral damage is a little bit farther down the list. So it is a even though it says strike two, it is we caught there was already an existing strike one on there. So it's only if you look on the collateral damage table so we're doing the strike versus air base it is a strike two but it was already so it's only really a strike one because we're just adding one so basically if we roll a three or lower let's we roll the one man i am rolling great for india so air and an air mobile point so owning player chooses a step loss and pakistan also loses an air mobile point and they only have one air mobile point so we will take that off um i don't know it doesn't look like you get any kind of victory point for the air mobile for losing the air mobile point so no big deal there and then what i think i'll do is i'll probably just reduce this because this f7 that's the the worst plane we have so i'll just reduce another one of those so pretty simple so now there's a strike two on that air base all right let's move we'll move this back over here so i've been goofing off with my setup as far as camera goes i'm just I had a stationary mount that's like fixed on the table, but it's great. It's great if there's a small area, like if I was only playing in this area that you can see right here, but this map is a little bit larger, so it, it really not functional for that. I have it on a tripod right now. The tripod works, but you know, eventually at some point the legs are going to have to rest on counters and I don't like doing that. So. Um, I'm trying to, I don't know, man, there's just maybe some kind of slide mount, you know, the, where it can, where I can move the camera back and forth and side to side, but then that would, ha I'd have to build some kind of contraption to do that. I don't know. There's no, there's no simple, there's no simple solution. Um, working the, now we got to roll for survival, rolled an eight. So those guys did not make it back. Well, at least the two special forces missions that didn't make it back, at least they were able to actually do something. So it always kind of sucks when you have a, a failed special forces mission and they, uh, they're they also destroyed in the process too. So um, that will do it as far as special forces go. Um, now I have to do the air naval phase, so that's going to take a while. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get that knocked out and then kind of just brief you on the results. All right, everybody, I have just concluded the air naval phase. Obviously, this game is great for somebody who's new to the series because there basically is no naval phase. So you really cut down a lot, right? Um, but there is an air superiority phase still because there are air units involved. Uh, I just concluded that. And it did not go well for the Pakistanis. In fact, it was pretty dismal. You can see the units that are left in the air superiority box. I believe there's 10 aircraft in there. Not a single Indian plane was shot down. I believe there might have been, I think maybe one got aborted. I, I don't remember. Um, it, was, it was pretty dismal for the Pakistanis. Um, so let's see, I think these guys decided not to fly at all. This one was already previously it moved to the flown box because of some 
result earlier that I don't remember because it's been a couple of days since um, I recorded the previous segment of this. Uh, you guys won't notice that, but it, it's been a couple of days. And all these guys were aborted during either the standoff or the dogfight phase. So, yeah, the Pakistanis didn't do very good at all. So, basically, what ended up happening is the Indians have air supremacy and the AWACS advantage moved from a 1 to a 3. So, basically, it will be kind of a snowball effect, right? During the next air superiority phase, the Indians, the Indian Air Force will have even a bigger advantage. So, Pakistani Air Force, yeah, it's, it's probably notional at best, right? Yeah, we've got planes, but... Um, that's about it. So we're going to move into the second special operations forces phase, which is the non-initiative player. So now they get a chance to do, um, special forces missions. Uh, they have four units and I go, I went ahead and allocated all four of them. So we've got, we're going to try and hit that helicopter there. We are going to try to definitely hit that Apache helicopter there. We are going to try to hit that helicopter there. And let's see if I can get this to where the glare isn't too bad. Uh, we're going to try to hit that airfield there. So that's what's going to happen. Let me see where I can put this, where it'll be a good spot. I'll go ahead and roll the dice. Um, so we will start, we'll, we'll start here. We'll start with trying to hit that, what is that, a Rudra? That looks like, let's see here, let me get my handy dandy book here. So that is a raid, and it is in Flatwoods. We are trying to hit a Hilo. I need to roll four or lower. Got a zero, which is good. Um, a zero is an X, which is a step loss. All right. Nope, oh, that kills that. That's awesome. That's, well, it's good for the Indians. Or, excuse me. It is good for the Pakistanis. That, I believe, is two victory points. Where's the VPs? This turn, there it is, right there. So, that's two VPs. Let's see if those guys survive. I believe it is a five or lower. So they did not survive. However, they did their job. They died doing their job. They did it well. Took out a helicopter. Can we see that? No, we cannot. So, That airfield right there is what I'm going for. Let's see here. That is, I believe that's Highland. Pretty sure. I think that's Highland. Yeah, that is Highland Woods. We're hitting an airfield. I need a five or lower. Six, not good enough. Let's see if they survive. They did not survive. All right. Then we will go back down to here. So there is, you can, no, can't. That Apache helicopter that is right down there is what we're going to go after. So that is flat. That is a helo need a three or lower. Chances are probably not gonna hit, nope. And let's roll for survivability. Seven. All right, well, the Pakistanis are really not starting off well. However, um, the start of this scenario, the, the Indians did do, I don't want to say it was a surprise attack, but the Indians initiated this whole war. So they are supposed to have the advantage. So uh, 
uh, we will continue on. We'll see if they can hit that helicopter right there. That is urban, right? Yes, that's urban. Um, Hilo, oh, we got a good chance of doing that. So we need a six or better, six or lower. So that's a zero. That should be, that's a zero result. So that is probably, yep, there is no step loss. There normally is a step loss, but that helicopter could not take a step loss. So that is another two victory points for the Pakistanis. So let's see if they survive that. They did not survive that. So it looks like all the Pakistani special forces have been eliminated. I'm pretty sure that you don't get... Yeah, there's no... Um, there are no victory points to be gained for eliminating special forces units, so which is probably a good thing because they uh, got eliminated pretty easily. So, uh, but anyway, that concludes the second special operations forces phase. I will now move into the first strike phase, and I'll go ahead and plot everything, and then get back and um, show you what I've got planned. All right, so first strike phase. Um, let me see here. So first part is uh, both players may conduct strikes. Alternating non-allied nuclear weapons markers. Um, probably you can hear a thunderstorm going on in the background. So if it gets really dark, it's because the power goes out. Um, let's, so let's see, nobody's using nuclear yet. Um, second part is allocation of missile and cruise missile strikes. So we've alternated place and cruise missile, or we don't, neither side has cruise missiles. They all have um, ballistic missiles. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, let's see if I can remember where I put them all. So I'm using my markers. So we have, let's see here. Here's the Kashmir Valley. Um, so along the border here, we've got that cruise missile, or not, that missile, is. there's a, I believe there's a headquarters underneath that. Let's look real quick. Uh, oh, can't see it. There we go. I think there's a headquarters. Yep, there's a headquarters right there. That's who I'm targeting. It's detected. It's detected because it's adjacent to an uh, enemy unit. So there's automatic detection there. Uh, let me see. These two Pakistani missiles are going to go to those airfields. So we'll see if we can maybe reduce some of the planes that are flying around. So that's kind of the thought process there. You do get uh, points for eliminating eliminating um, air bases and such. Uh, we are going to, the Indians are going to try and finish off that uh, that installation because it's already got a strike too so we only need to do one damage to it pakistanis are going to try and hit that headquarters that's detected right there we're going to again try to hit that apache helicopter with pakistani missiles and i think the last one is we're going to try to hit this artillery unit that has been detected and has a targeting marker from a previous special operations mission so we'll go ahead and there you go it's that uh, rocket artillery is what we're what we're going after so we've got the targeting marker should so make it a little bit easier to hit so there you have it i was thinking about hey you know maybe i want to um hit some nuclear weapon facilities or nuclear facilities both sides have them and they are worth quite a few victory points. It's five uh, victory points for each captured or destroyed nuclear weapon facility. Um, they are considered hardened targets. Very hard to destroy, especially with ballistic missiles. Um, cruise missiles are a little bit better, but the chances that happen are kind of low. So I, you know, I opted to not target with uh, missiles. I think ground units are a little bit more effective doing that, uh, and we'll we'll deal with that if and when that scenario does happen to happen to occur. So let's see here. We will. So I don't know if you can see it. Yep, you can barely see it. We'll go ahead and see if we can get that Apache helicopter that's right there. 
so that's a helo helo with I think you use in this case let me let me double check and make sure I can do that installation zero field. No, I have to I can't target the helo. I have to target the installation. Uh, that is a hardened target. So we are looking at a four or better. Where are my dice? There it is right there. We're looking at a four or lower. And what I'm hoping to do is get damage on that facility and then collateral damage to the helicopter. So that's a two. That's actually decent. Two is a strike one. We'll go ahead and... All right, so that goes there. And then I don't... Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. So that's... The new strike markers have collateral damage on it because the collateral damage gets um, rolled for later on. I probably ought to do it now, but I think the reason they do that is you do all collateral damage at the end of the strike phase because you might have aircraft that come in for um, airstrikes and you don't do multiple collateral damages, right? So let's say, so this missile did a collateral damage. Let's say I come in and do an airstrike and the airstrike causes collateral damage or the potential to cause collateral damage but it adds another strike marker on there. So now that's a strike two with collateral damage. I only roll for collateral damage once and that would be the highest result, right? It would be a strike two collateral damage result. So that's why they do that. Um, so there's that. Who else can we see? Oh, we've got that headquarters. Let's see if we can hit that guy. Um. That goes by, let's see here. I think that just goes by the terrain type. So that is considered, I think that's rough. So we need a five or better. That is a two. I think that's how it goes. That is a strike two. There's no collateral damage for Collateral damage is only for light for air units. All right, we'll go ahead and roll that. That's an installation. Or hardened target. I'm sorry. Nine. I. I you know what? I knew that the India that one wouldn't work because it never works. Like the ones you really, really, really want to want to hit, they very rarely work. Um, now we'll go ahead and do that one over there. You can barely see it. There's, there you go, right there. So I get a minus one because that has been detected by special forces units. Uh, that is an artillery unit, which is also considered a headquarters unit for purposes of these things. Let me just double check. Yeah, I think I'm good. So that is flat. That's also considered an artillery unit. All right, yeah, so that's flat. So let's see what happens there. That is a four. That is a strike one. Strike one, so that hits. Um, okay, we did that one, we did that one. Now we've got, we've got these three up here. Let's see if we can. All right, I apologize for the glare. Um, glare has always been an issue for me because I use the plexiglass, so it's always, going to be a problem. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, that's no good place for that. You'll probably be able to see that barely. All right, so we're going to do these two with the airfields. That is, that's Highland. So basically five or lower. So we'll go this one and that one. So that's a one, that's a five. 
So a one is a strike two, a five is a strike one. Oh, look, look at that. So we got a strike two collateral, and then we got a strike one with a collateral. I don't think, well, the collateral could, there's no helicopters there, but the collateral can still uh, affect aircraft. Because all of the aircraft that you see in the air superiority box, or all of these aircraft over here that you see, they're basically considered to be positioned at various installations and airfields across India and or Pakistan, depending on whose Air Force you talk to. So they're, they're considered to be stationed at all of these different places. So uh, that's kind of why you take collateral damage, because maybe, you know, there's a, a couple aircraft that are state that are assigned here. So that's kind of why that is. Um, and then last but not least, let's go to that one. That's a seven, that is not good for anything. So what I will do is um, I have to adjust the artillery because it took a strike. I have to adjust the headquarters because it took a strike. They get reduced. Or not reduced, but they get... Uh, you know how when you use an artillery or a headquarters for support, you rotate it. Um, they get two uses. You rotate it 90 degrees and then 90 degrees again. So it's, it's basically been utilized once. Um, and then, of course, the collateral damage will happen later on down in the phase. And then I also have to adjust the missiles. Let's see. The Pakistanis used, it looks like, four. They only have five. And I've, I figured, you know what, let's just use them all. Um, I don't see really a huge benefit for holding on to that stuff. I would imagine that in the beginning stages of a combat like that, both sides are going to use missiles judiciously to do what they need to do. So it looks like the Pakistanis used four of their five, and the the Indian the Indians used three of I think they okay they have fifteen left, so they used three of those. So they're down to twelve, and the Pakistanis are down to one missile left. So I'll be back in a little bit and let you know what's going on. All right, everybody, so I have now allocated uh, airstrikes, helicopter strikes. Uh, escorts, there really are no escorts to allocate. So, um, let me see, I've done that for both sides. I've done both the non-allied and the allied. Let's make sure there's no wild weasels. All right. All right. Okay, so we have, so this is what I have allocated for both sides. So for the Pakistani, I am going to tr attempt to strike on this headquarters that already has a strike two on it. Hopefully we can eliminate that. That would um, kind of slow things down. I'm also going to attempt to take that bridge out which would really mess up the ninth core right there, right? So if I can take out that, dang it. If I can take out the Pakistani ninth core headquarters and I can take out that bridge, that will just, this is, it'll really, it's gonna hurt the ninth core. Um, the only thing that's holding the Pakistanis back is they have no air cover. However, if we look over here at the tracks, both sides have a detection of four, SAM of three, AAA of one. So, I mean, probably the de detections are gonna be pretty low anyway. So I think that the, F, the excuse me, both sides are gonna have relatively easy time uh, conducting strikes just because the detection levels are so low and SAM levels are low so it's not going to be that big I don't think it'll be that big of a deal we're gonna have to roll pretty good uh, the Indian Air Force is going to target that 8th division of the 30th Corps right there it's in flat ground so chances are going to be pretty good 
uh, we are going to use a helo strike on this. This is artillery right here. This is that uh, Pakistani rocket artillery. See if we can finish that off. It's got a strike one on it. So we do have a targeted marker on it. So that's that's pretty good. I think we're going to send a couple aircraft here to take out. Hopefully hit this uh, this armor brigade right here. I don't know. Maybe I should go for the infantry. I don't know which one, but. I'll, I'll figure that out in a minute. Um, we're going to do a strike on this combat outpost, another strike on this combat outpost. Hopefully we can get these knocked out of the way so it'll be smooth sailing into Pakistan, at least in this area. This is the eastern eastern border. And then we've got another airstrike, which is going to go here at that. It's going to be the combat outpost. If you take a step loss, um, actually, an airstrike is probably not going to cause a step loss, so we will target, I think, this infantry unit right here. So there you have it. That's what we're going to do. Um, let me see. What do we do? Non-ally attempt detection of wild weasels. There are none. Allies resolve wild weasel strikes. Nope. Non-ally attempt detection of all our airstrikes then may attack those at early attacks. So the allies go first, I believe, by the looks of it. Yeah, I think the allies. Yep, allies Allies will strike first. So we, now we need to detect these guys. Mm. All right, what is... Just need to figure out what detection. Detection is at a four. I think all right airstrike inside enemy country or within two hexes of an enemy headquarters installation you use normal ADF let's see here so that or those these I don't know if you can see we see those right there yeah so these two combat outposts those will be local ADF not stuff on the air defense track mm. I believe the same will be for this combat outpost that's over here that I'm not going to move the camera for that guy will be um, normal ADF. This guy will be normal ADF. These will be normal ADFs. All right. All right. So we'll just start over here. So again, this is going to be local 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 all right so let's just go ahead and i don't know if you can see that so local adf basically a two or lower so we'll just go from left to right we'll start here and then go here and then go here nope nope and that one is de this strike is detected i don't uh, well you know for purposes of All right, so that guy was ADF detected. That is normal, so normal value is a value of four. That is not detected. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, helo strikes always use... I think helo strikes always use local. I think we'll go ahead and all right. So it's, it wouldn't have been detected either way, so it doesn't really matter. Um, now we'll go over to here. That is normal. So that is a zero. That is definitely a detection level of four. That is early detected. So that basically means when you early detect 
an air or that that means interceptors can come out and uh, intercept them. Uh, there are no interceptors on the Pakistani side, so it doesn't matter. And then both of these will be normal as well. So that's not detected, and this one I think that's a four. That one is detected. So this one was detected. All right. So there we go. There's detection has been taken care of. What do we have? I think we had we had three. Oops. Sorry about bumping that camera. All right, I think also early, mission may be attacked by interceptors and SAMs. A detected mission, mission may be attacked by SAMs. So we can, with the early detection, we can at least attack those guys with SAMs. There's no interceptors to do. So we'll just start over here and we'll just work our way that way since we're over here. Um, what are we doing? We're resolving... Allied airstrikes. All right. Let's see here. So there's only the one right there. Let's go ahead and we need to attack those with SAMs. Our SAM level is three. I also think all transport missions and non standoff strikes. Okay, so neither one of these are standoff because there would be an asterisk. Let's see, do we even have any? I don't know. I don't know that there are any on the Pakistani or I don't think there are the Pakistani and the Indian don't have any. Let's see if we can see here. So if the the last number has an asterisk by it, then it's standoff. Which basically means like uh Laser guided munitions, smart bombs, things like that. So, none of these are standoffs, so they can be attacked by AAA. So, I guess the Indian and the Pakistani Air Force are using dumb bombs. They're not they're not precision guided basically. So, they can be attacked by AAA and SAM. All right, so the AAA will be red, the SAM will be blue. So we're going to we have to we have to resolve on each one of those aircraft. So we'll start with the Mirage first. That is probably going to be very effective. So a SAM of 3. What did I say AAA was red, SAMs are blue. So that is an X. Air attack. Air unit attack helicopter loses one step and may continue the mission. But it also got hit by AAA, so we've already lost a step. And then the AAA was a. Uh, what was I doing? Sam was. The Sam was. There's a. So AAA is one. With a AAA level of one. So the, he also gets a plus one. to the resolution roll, which is definitely not good. I also think, I think Samfire gives you a DRM as well. Mm. No, no, there is no DRM for the Samfire. So he has a plus one to his die roll. Let's go ahead and do that other aircraft. Let's see if the Pakistani get lucky again. Four and eight. I think the eight is the same. That's definitely a miss. The triple A is also a miss. So now we can roll to resolve. So those are both twos. So that is a strike of two. That is in flat. Let's see here. Do we have any DRMs?
standoff that's not standoff air. Ground unit city fortification or jungle hex. I believe he is in a fortification. I think I'm pretty sure that's a fortification. That is a fortification, so I guess they're considered to be in like uh, bunkers and that kind of thing. So we'll just do straight up roll both of them or two. What does the fortification give them? Gives a, a plus one to the die roll. So this guy will get a plus two, this guy will get a plus one. So red will be the plus two. Nine and eight, that will be. That's no result. So we did all that for nothing. So this will go, this goes bye-bye. I'll just hold on to that for now because I might use that again. These aircraft go to the flown box. And we can remove that. Oh, that, that sucks. All right, that goes there. I'm pretty sure that was there and that was there. So let's go ahead and go over here. This is the only one we got to do a lot of rolling just because there's ADF detection. Mm, can be attacked by Sam's only. So let's go ahead and a three. And that's a Sam of what? A Sam of three? Plus one. So you, you, he gets a plus one to his die roll to see what happens. I don't know if that can be seen. So that is a five. That turns into a five. That's a combat outpost in flat. That's a two. That is a one. So that turns into a strike one. Actually, I don't think that's anything because it's fortified as well. So that is no result. This guy goes to the flown box. All right, the rest, the rest of these Indian airstrikes will just roll straight up because there are no um, there are no, what am I trying to do? There's no, there's no, um, air defense to roll for. So let's see, we've got two here. Red will be right. That seven's no good. The two, however, that is what? That's marsh. The two. So that is a strike one. We'll put a strike one on, I think that infantry division. There we go. Alright, so yeah, that is, these guys are done. Go to the flown box. We'll go ahead and do this guy here. An eight is not good enough to do anything. We'll go with that guy. A nine is not good enough to do anything. So those guys are done. And those guys will go to the flown box. And then last but not least, let's see if we can see that, that helo, which is the remaining helicopter for the Indian Army, that Apache, which is actually the good one. We will go ahead and see what we can do. We get, remember, we get a minus one because it's targeted. And that is 
That's flat. Is there anything because of the city? Ground unit in city. Plus one for that. So that negates the targeting marker. All right. So that's a straight roll. One, that's exactly what they wanted to get. Well, a zero would have been better. A one is a strike two result. That already has a strike one result on it. So I believe I believe that destroys it. Actually, you know what? No, it does not. It. Uh, I think that'll reduce it. All right. If a unit bears a strike one marker and receives a strike two result, apply a step loss to the unit and remove the marker. All right. That's what I thought. So you do, you get a step loss. Oh, look at that. There is no step loss to give. So what do we get for... Brigade or battalion is plus one. U.S. Brigade eliminated enemy division or headquarters eliminated. Hmm... So what's the difference in, so a unit is one, a headquarters, I believe artillery counts for headquarters, so I'll get three victory points for that. That moves the Indian total to five this turn. So we can go ahead and move all that. All right, well that was, uh, that was definitely successful for the Indians. We wanted to get rid of that uh, that rocket artillery would uh, over time become a nuisance. And now, allies resolve. Non allies. Re All right. So the non now the non allies, which will be the Pakistani for this game. All right, let's see. We'll do the detected one first. Six, I do not think. Six is not good enough, so detection did not happen. And we'll just start with that guy. These F-16s are definitely better than almost anything that the Indians have. So the Pakistanis do have that going for them. They do have decent aircraft. So that's a three, and what are we attacking? That is a headquarters. It is in a city, so there's a plus one to that. And that is, what is that? That's rough, rough? That's rough. All right, so that's a three, rough three. That is a strike one. Already had a strike two. So basically we'll do the same thing that we did before. The marker is removed. Step loss happens and I believe it goes to, it's completely used side. So that headquarters will not be able to be used for support this turn. All right, this goes back to the flown box. Now, last but not least, let's see if we can destroy that bridge. It's a plus two DRM, and that is in rough. So that is rough. That is a three strike rating. So we need to roll basically, I think, a three. We got a six. That's not good enough. So these pilots were not good enough to hit that bridge. So nothing happens to the bridge. Unfortunately, the Pakistanis were only able to do... 
They weren't able to kill that headquarters, but they were definitely able to hurt it. Taking out that bridge would have been really, really good. What I maybe should have done was done some interdiction on that bridge. That might have been better. Um, but it is over. What's next? Um, Naval bombardment? Nope. Roll for collateral damage. So now we have three places for collateral damage. Can we see that one down there? No, nah, we can't see that one. So we're going to do collateral damage on that installation right there. That's a collateral damage of one. That is a strike versus air base. Three. Air. Owning player chooses one step loss from an air unit in the basing box attack. So we have to, the Indians have to take a step loss. So we're just going to take a step loss from one of these Jaguars. So it goes over to that side. So now that marker gets replaced with an actual strike one marker. So we know that there's no collateral damage now. All right. And then we have... These two here. Let's see, we'll do the strike two collateral damage first. That's a nine. I don't think that's going to be anything. Nope, that's nothing. And then that strike one, that's a five. And that is also nothing. So we can do this here. That goes there. And that goes there. I usually do my strikes at an angle like that, so that way if they're at the bottom of the stack, I can look at the stack and know that there's some kind of effect marker, right? Or I usually try to do my effect markers canted like that at a 45 degree angle so that if I'm looking at a stack and I see those little things poking out, because you'll see it, right? You'll notice it. If I see those poking out, I know that there's some kind of status effect there. And that's it's easier for me to check, right? So that's that's kind of how I do things. Um, so the first strike phase is over. First supply phase you do not do on game turn one, so that's pretty easy. Now we go to the initiative, movement, and combat phase. And it is an initiative tur turn. The Indians do have the initiative. And I believe when you have the initiative, they have surprise on game turn one. So I believe they get a column shift for everything, too. Surprise all ROI attacks on game turn one receive a bonus of one column shift to the right. So, yeah. I just need to remember that. Um, I'll go ahead and I guess I need to figure out what I want to do first and then I'll be back.